Okay, I have a feeling some of you maybe got a little frustrated after that. That was not easy. So make sure if you don't like how that turned off, know that you can always cut it away and try again. Um, remember with ceramics, perseverance is key. Knowing that you can always start again and start fresh is always good to keep in mind. So with this, you can see my bowl rim is still looking a little uneven in some areas and that is okay. We're gonna be cleaning up those edges. What I do wanna see is that there should not be a joint that you can see. If you can see some lines going around the outside of your pot still, a uh, couple things that you could do to fix that would be to score over those lines and then just put some fresh clay and fill that in. Um, sometimes when we're blending, we tend to pinch or take too much clay away when we're blending and it thins it out. So all of those parts, you could take a little bit of clay, like I, I'll show you here as a, just an, an example. Um, right here kind of needs it right here. So I would score over these areas, take my water, put a little dab of water on that. I would take a fresh piece of clay and just put it over that and then I would blend it in. And always, 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 while you're blending, you should be having one hand on the opposite side that you're blending. You wanna support that wall as you're blending. I need to track down my metal rib for that blending. Now that's looking better. So I'm gonna do the rim that looks like this guy. I wanna do the rim that just tips out a little bit. I showed you the flower rim. I showed you the rim where you would attach it the other direction. So you can tip it the other direction and have it tipping down. Um, this one makes the most sense to do with the way I attached this one on. So I'm just gonna start angling my wall out. And as I'm doing this, I'm gonna walk you through the troubleshoots of what I'm seeing. So as I'm, I'm starting to tip this out, what, I'm, what you don't wanna see are cracks that are on the inside of your, your walls. So you wanna support the base that we already made and you're gonna just start angling and tipping that rim out, out and away. You can see it already happening here. I'm angling that out. So I'm supporting down beneath and then just tipping it out over my finger. Do you see that? And that just tips it out. And I'm just gonna keep turning this around and angling that out. If you see any cracks, like mine, I'm getting it a little bit, you're gonna score, take your needle tool, score over those areas, take a little fresh clay and some water or slip, and you're gonna push Push it in and fill it in. Not too much. You can take your sponge too. And also if you're getting too many cracks, that probably means that you're pressing a little bit too low. So we only attached, or I only attached on like a, a maximum of about a half an inch so I don't have a lot of clay to tip. If your piece of clay that you attached on is taller, try to maintain only tipping out that top edge. Sometimes if it's cracked, you, you don't necessarily have to score over it. You can just blend that clay away. That can work as well. But what we really want to do is we wanna make sure that this rim that's angled out is all the same width all the way around. So I'm gonna take my time in getting that edge to not only angle out, but also also be nice and even. It's all about that craftsmanship. So again, here we go, tip it out, angle that out. Once you have your rim at the angle that you want it, if it's looking good to you, I would take your blow dryer out so it kind of sets up a little bit more. 
at the angle that you want it to be at. And then we're going to be starting to apply our texture on the inside and the outside of the bowl. All right, so before we get moving on to our texture, I wanted to show you a way that you can smooth out your clay a little bit more and get the angle of this edge to pop out a little bit more. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to grab your metal rib. I have something called a rubber rib, just a little, little different material, but your metal rib is going to do the same thing here where you, you're going to be bending it. And what I'm doing, I'm supporting the wall behind it with this hand here. And then I'm going to push against the wall with my rib. And then I'm also going, my fingertips are just below that wall. And I'm also going to do that to the top of the rim that's flaring out. And what that is going to do is it's going to help form kind of that transition. And then it also is going to help really define your edges. So my fingertips are behind the bowl. And if you're kind of bending this so that it can form along the curve of the interior of the bowl, that is the best. So I'm going along the rim and then going right up against the body. And you should be starting to see how my edge is starting to look a little bit more defined. And I'm just going to keep turning and turning this in a circle. And my bowl is still in. It's very soft. It's not quite fully leather hard, so it's still allowing me to kind of move it and shape it how I want to. If your bowl is already kind of mostly leather hard, you won't be able to turn the edge out very much, but you will be able to get it shaped and smoothed on the inside. And I'm going to keep turning and turning this in a Okay, so if you watched that time-lapse video portion, you saw me go through, you know, questioning and trying to figure out what sort of texture to do. And you saw me put in the heart texture and then take it away. So you guys should be spending time thinking about, you know, what textures work well together, what, what textures don't work very well together. 
and know that you can always reverse it and use that a rib tool to smooth anything out that you need to. Right now, I have a texture on the inside that I'm liking and a texture on the outside of my bowl, which I'm also liking. And so I'm going to be going on to the next step of attaching a foot and adding a foot. Now, if you were in my class, we talked about doing a carved in foot as an option. The base of my bowl is a little on the thinner side right now, so I don't want to carve through to the um, through my pot. So I am going to be doing an attached foot. And so um, if you wanted to do a carved in version and you have a thinner form, you would just make sure that you outlined the area kind of on the inside ring here. And you would take your loop tool and you would carve down and in this area and get it shaved away. So you would take your loop tool and gently press in and you'd want to go down about an eighth of an inch. I'm like I said, I'm just worried about the base of my bowl getting too thin. So I do not want to do that route here. So I need to move this aside and roll out my coil and then I'll be right back. 